Welcome to Forum 360. I'm your host, Leah Love, where we have a global outlook from a local view. Today, I am so excited because we have Jan Conrad. She's the executive director of the Women's Network, and we are going to be talking about the new wave of women's leadership. So thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. So tell me a little bit about Women's Network, about your um, journey to this point. How's that been? So Women's Network, first of all, um, I'll talk about that a little bit. So Women's Network is a 40-year-old organization, and it has its roots really in the 70s when there was a, a big change in the country it was in 1975, this country hit a million divorces. And so Akron being the rubber kind of capital of the world with a lot of industries, um, a tire business in town, there were women who were finding themselves for the first time in their life um, needing to go outside and generate their own income. And so the network started with really women supporting women and helping them get those skills and abilities, connecting them to Department of Labor dollars so they could get trained um, in skills and um, trades that would help them get out into the workforce and support themselves. So that was in the late 70s, 1978. I did not know that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and so over the years, the organization has been volunteer driven for the most part, um, and it has had its ups and downs, times when it was very much thriving and many, many women involved, and then kind of when it had to reinvent itself. So about in the early 90s, it started to really reinvent itself as. Um, a training organization which would which connected, inspired, and empowered women. And it has evolved over the years. And um, today, under the last six years, really, we've become very active in that space. And our mission has been about professional development, about leadership for women, about really how to help women maneuver the workplace and create their path and their strategy towards leadership and growth in their career or in their business or in civic engagement. And I became connected to the Women's Network several years ago. In 2015, I became director of the Women's Business Center in Cleveland. It was an SBA and is an SBA funded nonprofit organization that is attached to the Economic Community Development Institute. And I was charged with leading a nonprofit that would serve entrepreneur women. Women who were either for the first time in their life exploring that path or who were already engaged in business and needed support. There are 120 of those across the country and Northeast Ohio hadn't had one for a while. And so um, I came and launched that program and we served the greater Cleveland and um, Northeast Ohio community. And I began to do some work with Women's Network. We partnered and offered an Empower program, and that program was focused for entrepreneur women, and they were primarily in the Akron, greater Akron community. Mm -hmm. And that's really was my exposure to Women Net Women's Network, and I began to see that they were a very viable organization offering great resources, great training um, for women, and they were also in the midst of a gender equity and women's leadership leadership research study and that fascinated me greatly. So that's how I came to know about them. Tell me about this study. What did you learn from that study? So actually we revealed the results of that study this past November at a big event called Flux. It was with the Women's Leadership Summit at the Knight Center and we, the tag was Flux, a movement for change, where we revealed what this two-year study found in the Akron community. We mirrored it after a study you might have heard of, I don't know if you've heard of the Women in the Workplace study that mm -hmm. the McKinsey Group does with leanin.org. Okay. We had been watching that study, we being Women's Network, and some of us in leadership in, in the women's arena here in Northeast Ohio, and we were very fascinated by the depth and the quality of that study that looked at women all across the country, looked at a lot of statistics about where women really landed in, two, in 2018. Two, I think they started that in 2015. And as Women's Network, 
would be out in the community talking about the need for women's leadership. And they would talk to people in the community, community leaders, funders, people who had a vested interest. When they were asked about why this was a priority, they would always say, well, we know that it's needed, but they did not have any data. They had no raw data that was unique to Summit County that they could say, we know that in Summit County, yes, only 5% of women are in the C-suite or are in the C our CEOs. You know, that's the national average, but we had no data to draw upon. And so in order to know if and how we are impacting change, we had to figure out where we were. So this study really was developed to set the bar, like where are we today? And then moving forward, we want to impact that. Mm -hmm. So that's really what the study is. We have a link on our website to the presentation that was done at Flux. We are actually in the very ending stages of a report that we will have that will have a lot of additional data that okay. was not in the presentation. Okay. But if you go to our website today, you can see, for example, that um, women in Summit County mm -hmm. actually fare more poorly than women on the national level when it comes to leadership in the C-suite. We are less than 5% of C-suite leaders in this county. So we have a lot of work to do. Hmm. Now, what do you think contributes to that being that low of a percent? I think there are several things. Um, first of all, um, we, we are, we are an older Midwest um, manufacturing community in general. And that in typically has been more of a male dominated arena, although women are making strides. We also, I feel, um, have women haven't had a place to go where they can really begin to understand the kind of tools, the kind of the kind of awareness that they need um, to learn really how to improve their own um, tools, how to, how to become more aware of the intentional strategy you have to put around kind of getting into that space. It's just really not been something I feel that we've developed a real awareness around. It's, it, we know that women want to get there, um, but those old um, adages that are the kinds of things that have been said for years, like, well, women don't really want to be there, or women walk away from the workforce because, you know, they have, they are the ones that have children and they stay home with, mm -hmm. with a family. Really, our data shows that women really don't leave the workplace in large masses to start a, to start a family and just stay home. There are women, certainly, that leave, but it would not be the numbers that you think. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of things around just attitudes in general that still have to be changed, and that change really comes with education. We really don't believe that it's any kind of an intentional um, an intentionality that companies haven't opened the doors wider for women. We just believe awareness is really important. Now, I know one of the things that I've always um, come up against and see this kind of fork in the road, we have a stereotype of there's women who will take the road and block you at every opportunity that they can, the mm -hmm. cattiness, quote unquote. Right. And then there's women who, like you, will go the extra mile to make sure the person behind them has a great path, a great opportunity. Absolutely. What do you think creates that, that path? And what made you decide to go down this route? Well, what made me go down this route was um, I was living in Florida um, for 15 years. Um, working in the government space and my last seven years in Florida prior to coming back to Ohio were working with dislocated aerospace workers. So in 2008 when they retired the space shuttle there was a huge need for retraining, retooling of those 8,000 workers that we called it were now outside the gates. And I was at the table uh, working inside county government when the state, federal, and local officials were writing for a grant to kind of 
to help that community not become devastated with the retirement of an industry that they so highly depended on for as an economic driver. Because not only was it those 8,000 aerospace workers that were displaced, but it was also all of those small manufacturing companies that were tied to that in ways that weren't necessarily right behind the gates at NASA. So we wrote for a grant, and it was the Space Act Agreement, and we got a, a large grant for retraining and at that point, I was asked then if I would be willing to put that program together. So as we put the program together and we looked at the different pieces that people needed support wrapped around, one of the big pieces was entrepreneurship. Many people who were at the Space Center were over 50. And they were not in a position in life where they could just walk away and move to South Carolina because they were so had so many things in the community. Their, their parents, their aging parents, their kids in high school, their wives were who were teachers and couldn't walk away from a job they'd been in for 25 years. And the space shuttle was operating on 1980s technology. So these weren't necessarily people who were ready to go to Northrop Grumman or Harris or Rockwell Collins or some of the companies that are huge mm -hmm. in that community. They didn't really have the skills. So they said, you know what, we want to take our intellectual property and begin our own journey. As I began to lead that program and put together programs collaboratively across Central Florida with a lot of um, universities and other institutions, I watched the difference between men and women. And as we began to try to help them get into programs like Startup Quest and work through that. I watched some of the biases of some of the brightest women who went on to create a plan and need venture cap. I watched the challenges that they had. And I was dumbfounded, quite frankly, um, that they had some of the challenges they, that they did that I did not necessarily see from their male counterparts. And it was not necessarily an intentional thing on anyone who was meeting with them. It was really, I believe, just different styles of communication. Mm -hmm. And I began to think, wow. So I, I worked with the Women's Business Center in Central Florida, both out of Orlando and out of Melbourne, Florida. And I saw the programming that they had for women, and not women only, but I saw how they were able to help women overcome some of those hurdles, and we began to collaborate. And I decided this is a space where I want to work because this is a challenge that we need to address. So that's how I got here. I know that's a long no, story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that shows why you're so passionate I about so it. I am so passionate um, about it. And a lot it. of times, some, uh, sometimes people don't understand the need behind or why they're doing that's what they're doing. Why. And you yes. have your why Absolutely. and you have your vision of your why. Absolutely. Um, if you are just tuning in, mm -hmm. I am your host, Leah Love, and we have Executive Director of the Women's Network, Jan Conrad, and we are talking about the new way of women's leadership. So let's get back to the Women's Network. Uh, so we know that they are there to connect, inspire, and empower, empower women in the community. Um, so how can one become a member of your organization? So it's very simple. We are a membership organization. It is $100 a year. Mm -hmm. um, you go to our website and you click on become a member and it'll walk you through. So just the standard membership is $100. And what's the um, website? And the website is wnnetwork.com, okay. womensnetwork.com. So you become a member and Typically, you'll get a response from me welcoming you to our community of women. And a lot of times, I do offer everybody that joins just a one-on-one, -on -one, let's get together and talk about what, what are your goals and what are you trying to get out of this organization? Mm -hmm. um, because we have a lot of different things going on. And I, I always just like to know who the members are that are a part of it. So that happens most of the time. But if not, you will become uh, immediately connected to a newsletter, which talks about all the different programming that we have. So our um, our primary programming is always wrapped about, around some kind of leadership training or um, professional development to help you further your career path. And we have for you know several different levels. One of them is leveraging and managing talent. And oftentimes in an organization, it doesn't have to necessarily just be a woman that experiences this, but one piece of 
workshop, a workshop series that we do is called, um, like I said, Leveraging and Managing Talent. And it's a series of six workshops over seven or eight months that is all about being coachable, having an executive presence, how to have great, how to do a great presentation. How do you do business writing? It's, it's also about coaching your peers because Typically, you are good in something that you are doing, mm -hmm. and then you become promoted, and all of a sudden now, you are the superior of someone mm -hmm. who was your peer. Mm -hmm. How do you navigate those waters? How do you give people feedback? So we have you know, several different um, series that are all wrapped around that. We also have what we call the CLI. It's a Community Leadership mm -hmm. Institute. And the Community Leadership Institute is a partnership with Leadership Akron. We partner, and it is community engagement, with two additional components that are unique to women. One is everyone that is a part of that program comes in and takes the Strengths Finders Assessment to find out their top five strengths. And the training engages the community but also each session of that, it provides one of the different pillars of those strengths-based talents or um, innate qualities that a person has. And it teaches you how to move towards your strengths. Okay. And so as you create your strategy during that training period, it's all around, OK, these are my strengths, and I want to move towards this. In addition to that, we teach about gender bias, both from the standpoint of myself as a female. What are my gender biases? How do I prohibit myself from moving? What am I doing that is just not going to get me where I want to be? And then also to recognize it when it happens, and how to respond to it in a way that is a good outcome for both people involved in it. So we just want to make women aware of that. Mm -hmm. So those are really the three components. Women go through that course. They create some great, great kinships and friendships with other women who are aspiring. And it's very much a collaborative environment of how do we help you to your strategy, and how do I help you get to your strategy, and how do we work together to make this place a better community for all people. Um, and then the last one I just want to touch on, which is a new one, and it's, it's really a powerful workshop called Leadership on Purpose. And we have Darren Weimer facilitating that for us. Mm -hmm. He's the executive director of SEI, Summit Educational Initiative, doing a powerful um, work through what is your risk tolerance as a leader. And so it's for women who are in CEO, um, business drivers, women who own their own business, what's your risk tolerance? And how do you implement that? How do you hire? How do you, how do you find out who to surround yourself with? Really based around your risk tolerance and then what you, what you need to drive your organization forward. Very good, very, very good session. Good. So we've got some great, great programming. We also are partnering with The No, which has been around Ooh, at the mm -hmm. Chamber for quite a while. And we're partnering on our luncheon programming. We have a big, um, empowerment women, empowerment women's luncheon for February nineteenth. Dr. Jennifer Savitsky, who is president of our board, will be uh, presenting um, a talk on resiliency, and she's done it once before. And it, we are asking both organizations to get involved in that event. And we have a women of achievement event coming up on June fourteenth that we're partnering with them on. We also have come lunches and breakfasts on a monthly basis that we're uh, partnering with each other on. So both of our groups are coming together. And it's just a great networking and collaborative way for women to work together and get to know each other. Yeah, it seems like you are hitting every single aspect of your mission. That, that is what <laughs> we're trying to do. And I love that you do. add the personal touch of really trying to connect with your new members. It's important. It's not something that you see every day from ex an executive director. Well, you know, I, I, hope, I'm, I hope I can keep it up for a long time. I mean, it's really, to me, it's just really important because getting connected to the energy that the organization has to offer is so important. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, can men join your organization? Absolutely. And I'm happy to report we have our first we had our first man member about two weeks ago. Okay. And we've talked about this. 
often over the years. I mean, they were talking about it when I first got connected to them. And we've never said they can't, mm -hmm. but we've just never had a man asked to join. We had um, a, an honorary chair at our Flux event, Bradley Dunn, mm -hmm. who was with the Ohio Civil Rights Commission, and he was so supportive, and he recently joined. So we're elated, and, and we, we really do want to work with when we believe. You know, I used to say when I coached in Cleveland mm -hmm. with women, when I coached, and I, they would talk to me about a business idea, we'd talk it through, and I'd say, now, if you really want to know something, just go talk to a smart businessman and listen. Don't say anything back to him, but n businessmen have great advice. You might not always like the way it sounds or comes out, mm -hmm. but just listen. And so we really want men at the table, too. Mm -hmm. um, so we're related to have that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to ask you a couple really quick questions just to get to know you a little bit okay. more deeper. So as a hairstylist, I notice a complicated hairstyle. As a singer, they notice a talented vocalist. What is it that you notice as, your, oh, as a wow. leader and professional? Well, I'll tell you, when I, when I meet women, mm -hmm. um, I notice women that really have that drive to make an impact, whether it's as an entrepreneur, as a leader. I notice women that can articulate very well. I notice women that understand how to say more with less words, and I'm not always good at it myself, but I, it's a quality that I really admire, mm -hmm. how to be succinct, to the point, how to capture the um, energy and the audience. Um, those are things I notice okay. absolutely right away when I meet with women. I admire that too because I, I love to hear women who can speak and it's just like, oh, you're just so captivating. Absolutely, you know? that's yeah. great. Uh, what advice would you give your 30-year-old self? Oh, wow. My 30-year-old self would have been, Jan, jump off the cliff. Take the risk. Now, I took risks in my career, but when I look back, um, I started my career in 1986, so the environment was different. I worked for some wonderful people who gave me great opportunities, and I was involved in some startups. But there were times when, wow, I could have used a support group because I think I would have jumped off the cliff mm -hmm. quicker, mm -hmm. and I've gone, I would have gone for a, a bigger jump. <laughs> so that okay. would be, jump you know, quicker. and listen to your gut. Listen to that inner voice. That inner voice is often right, especially the more you gain experience in life. Pay I attention. Feel like you always end up doing it afterwards, and you say, "I should have trusted myself." Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So that's great advice. Um, do you have an event that triggered that triggered? something that made you willing to sacrifice along the way for, because you have a, a lot of roles that you play, you know, right. a mother, wife, daughter, worker, community right. member, you know, what made you say, all right, this is how I'm going to be able to balance and how am I going to prioritize this? And what am I going to sacrifice and not sacrifice? You know, that's all, I mean, that's always an interesting question, when I look back and I think about it, I realized at a fairly young age several things. One was I loved being a mother, but I get my energy from people. And I, was, I always loved a challenge. And I knew that somehow I had to stay connected to things that were important outside my home. My family was certainly very important. And I have to say, I have a wonderful husband, and he has been a great, great partner in this all these years. We shared a lot of things before that might have been as typical as it is today. He was my biggest cheerleader. Mm -hmm. And I just knew that I had this passion and energy, and that um, it was because of such great support, I knew it was OK. I knew my kids were going to be OK. I knew that. Uh, certainly, I was. We were not perfect. I'm not perfect. There were times when I made choices, and I look back and I think, oh, I don't know if I should have done that. Everybody has those, but I've always been competitive, and I've always really cared about people. And I've I've get my energy from people. I'm an extrovert, so I needed I needed to be out in the workplace. I needed to be out in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. 
Do you have a quote or book you would like to leave with the young viewers and listeners that are we have? Oh, wow. There are so many of them. I would say my favorite author right now, mm -hmm. right now today, is Brene Brown. Okay. Um, she has so many books, Braving the Wilderness. I think the books are very timely for women right now. Now, that book, I, I read a book when I was in my 30s. It was Swimming Among the Sharks. Okay. That was a good book for me at the time mm -hmm. because there were days I felt like that. But I think we're past that. Um, I would say today my favorite author right now is Brene Brown. And all of her books are excellent. In fact, they're, they're books we're looking at um, doing some work around in Women's Network. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really enjoyed getting to know you and learning more about the Women's Network. If you could tell me again really quick, what is that website and how can they contact you? It is wnnetwork.com, so womensnetwork.com. WN is for Women's Network if you Google that. Or Google Women's Network Northeast Ohio, it'll come up. And then when you get there, there's bars at the top. Go ahead and uh, check out our programming, check out how to join. We'd love to have anyone be a part of our organization. Awesome. I am Leah Love. I'm your host for Forum 360, where we have a global outlook from a local view. Have a great week. Forum 360 is brought to you by Electrical Impulse Communications, the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, an anonymous donor, the Jewish Community Board of Akron, Medical Mutual of Ohio, Blue Green, and Forum 360 supporters.